So, me and Ben are here in West Lexham in Norfolk, and uh, we're actually planning on going out and doing some filming around the coast this morning, but the weather outside is dreadful, it's really tipping it down, so it's just not possible. So we've come here to use one of the barns that they have on offer at West Lexham. But anyway, whilst we're going out filming, we've got a rather lovely piece of gear to try out, and that is the Ronin 2. If you're not familiar with the Ronin 2, it is DJI's flagship gimbal stabiliser that's capable of supporting and balancing camera rigs of up to 13.6 kilograms. That's over double the weight of the Arri Alexa ST body and over seven times the weight of that the C300 Mark II that we're running on it. It's a system designed for use with larger production cameras of the sorts. And in light of that, it's a tool that's been designed to withstand the most strenuous production environments. Those powerful motors allow the Ronin 2 to travel at up to speeds of around 75 miles an hour, so filming fast-paced car sequences is no bother. And it's all neatly tucked away in a splash-proof carbon fibre frame. Clearly, this is the case that the Ronin 2 comes in. As you can see, it's rather compact. You're not going to be rushing to try and get this on as your hand luggage anytime soon when you're going on a plane. But anyway, this houses the Ronin 2 itself and everything that you need to get it hooked up to your camera system to go out and shoot. So let's take a look inside. The gimbal is housed in a circular carbon fibre frame. You can opt not to rig the bottom half should you want to get lower to the ground, but if you're operating handheld, then you are going to miss out on having those foldable feet, so you can actually put this thing down for a rest between takes. Underneath the first foam layer of the hard case, we get to the gimbal itself, which is all self-contained and doesn't really require any additional assembly. It connects straight into the frame with a simple yet reassuringly strong sliding locking mechanism. You can seamlessly swap from mounting from a handheld setup to hanging the rig off the back of a moving vehicle with minimal effort. Each of the axes on the gimbal can be individually locked, which one, makes transporting it much safer, and two, with the help of the fine tuning screws, makes balancing this system super straightforward. Okay, so the whole system is powered by these two batteries. And if you recognize them, well, that's because you've probably invested or used a DJI Inspire 2 drone. They're exactly the same batteries. So if you do have that drone, then that's one less thing to think about. You don't need to buy more of these when you buy this system. So you get two straight out the box, and the cool thing with these batteries is that they are also self-heating, so if you're shooting in colder environments, these will work as they're intended to, down to minus 15 degrees Celsius. So let's just turn the unit around. Now this is the battery unit on the back, and it simply takes the two batteries by sliding them firmly into place, and then they're locked in. So these two batteries, if they're just powering the gimbal, they'll power the gimbal for up to eight hours, so it's a great runtime. And uh, the nice thing about them is that they're hot swappable too. So if one gets depleted, you can take it out while still running the whole system off the one battery and hot swap that next battery in there as well. On the very back of the unit, if you can see that there, we've got two PTAP ports as well. So if you wanted to run some external accessories, those can all be run on PTAP, but also this battery unit can power to the rest of the gimbal down below, so we've got more power ports down here to power anything that's actually on the camera stage at the bottom. If you're using, say, a red dragon camera, these two batteries can power the camera and the gimbal for up to two and a half hours. It's obviously, it's nowhere near the eight hours runtime if you just do the gimbal alone, but it does mean that you just have to worry about these two batteries or these types of batteries, instead of having lots of different batteries for different accessories. We're also taking the SDI output from the C300 Mark II, going into the connection at the bottom of the gimbal, and at the top, we've got the small HD 702 bright monitor rigged up so we can monitor our shot from the camera whilst operating. Okay, so now we've got everything connected, everything's balanced, and we've got the batteries plugged in on the back, we can now look to turn this unit on. So there's an on switch at the very back on top of that battery unit, but there's also one at the front, so if I just press this in, what will then happen is the screen on the back will light up, and you can have it so that it'll make a noise to say that this thing's coming on and it, you know, it's booting up, but after so many times of turning it on, that does kind of grate on you after a while. So I've turned that off, but it looks like we're all running. Easiest way to check, pick it up. There you go, it looks like it's balancing everything and we're ready to go. On the back of the gimbal is a 1000 nit daylight viewable screen. And it's from this unit where you can calibrate, assess how the gimbal is performing and really fine tune the motors to your liking. You can dial in exactly how you want these motors to behave, how strong and how quick they are to react, depending on the type of motion that you want to create in your shot. There's also the auto-tune stability feature, which, when activated, the system will intelligently adjust the parameters of each of the motors based on the camera rig's weight and balance to the most optimal settings. 
With the addition of the DJI Gimbal Assistant mobile app, you'll also get some creative intelligent features. There are three modes to choose from, panorama, which automatically controls the Ronin 2 to create a still panoramic image, time-lapse, where you can program moves over the course of whatever duration you'd like, and finally, cam anchor mode, that gives you the ability to record the gimbal's orientation at any particular location, thanks to the GPS, and at a push of a button, revisit that exact orientation. If you haven't shot with the Ronin 2 before, then the first thing that you'll notice is when you go to pick it up, you have this horrible realization that you're just not as strong as you once thought you were, if you ever did. You know, the thing can carry, including its own body weight, up to 20 kilograms, and that is going to take its toll if you're shooting for a prolonged period of times on your arms. Now, with the C300 Mark II body on there, I think it's quite manageable. I'd be happy to do uh, one minute to two minute long takes before I put it down for a quick breather and then reset and go again. Um, but obviously, if you're going to be shooting with bigger cameras and for longer periods of times, then you really are going to want to get something that's going to help you distribute that weight from your arms to your hips. Something like a ready rig or an easy rig would be ideal. So the Ronin 2 also comes with a dual band wireless controller, which works at up to 1.5 kilometers, so a pretty decent distance there. And this controller allows you to control the pan, the tilt, and also the roll axis as well remotely. You can control the speed of all those parameters as well, directly on these three knobs at the top. So if I just show you there, I can pan left, right, up, down, whichever direction I want. I can, for some reason, if I ever wanted this, just continuously go in a ridiculously quick circle. No one would never do this, but you've got all the controls there. And the reason why you'd want that is if you're shooting uh, in a two-man setup, so one person might be operating this gimbal handheld, whilst the other one can actually just fine-tune and keep the camera controlled and pointed at where it should be pointed at. Or if you're just one person, say if it's mounted on a drone, or if it's mounted on the back of a vehicle where you can't actually get direct access to the gimbal, then this is going to allow you to still have that control as well. And if you use some compatible cameras, you can also trigger the starting record on here as well. So, in a nutshell, that is the Ronin 2. You know, we've not had massive time to shoot with this, but from the time that we have had with it, it has performed beautifully. It's such an easy, intuitive tool to use. And the thing is built like a tank, except it doesn't weigh as much as a tank, of course, because it is very lightweight for, you know, the actual payload that it can carry. And that payload, you know, 13.6 kilograms, that should be more than enough for the cameras that you want to put on this. You know, if you're going to be shooting on an Alexa 65, then obviously that's a different story and different budgets. But for the majority of cameras that you're going to use, this thing is going to keep up perfectly fine. So that's some nice peace of mind for you, knowing that you don't need to upgrade this system due to camera weight. And of course, just because it's built for those bigger cameras, doesn't mean that you can't put, you know, a smaller camera, DSLR, studio camera, CSC camera on there. This thing will still perform. So, for more information, news, reviews, tips and tricks, head over to wex.co.uk.